Hey guys, this video is a bit of a follow-up video from the pumpkin pie assembly video. If you want to see how to actually assemble this effect, um, you should watch that video first. Um, so in this video we're going to be putting uh, this effect into this box so you have a switch to step on and all that sort of stuff. So you'll need a few things for this. Of course the first thing is the assembled uh, uh, pumpkin pie PCB and make sure that it has been tested as well. Don't just plow ahead um, and put the uh, effect into the enclosure without testing it because if you have a problem with your effect uh, it's going to make things very difficult. It's hard to get to the back of the PCB once it's been put inside an enclosure and it's just hard it's just a lot harder to work out what's actually wrong if you don't know that your effect is working when you put it in the in the um, enclosure. So the enclosure I'm using is a red 1590B. Um, you can use a bigger enclosure, um, but you probably won't fit it inside a smaller enclosure. A latching three pole double throw foot switch. Don't use a momentary, they won't work. A DC jack, I'm using a miniature non-switching DC jack. It's only got, as you can see, two little lugs on the end there. And two quarter inch audio jacks. Uh, these are also mono because I'm not using a battery, sorry I should mention. Um, that's why I can get away <coughs> with a non-switched DC jack and two mono jacks. And then obviously something on the front to indicate that the pedal is on. I'm going to do something a little bit different here and you might actually guess by just looking at the LED. Um, it's a kind of it's a kind of like a recessed panel, panel mount um, LED. I, I've seen these on commercial a commercial gear before but I don't know if I've actually seen anyone do it in the pedal in the pedal world so I'm gonna give it a try in this one because it's the first time I've done it uh, I, first time I will have done it um, and obviously the advantage of that is <clears throat> if your foot slips off the three pole double throw it doesn't hit the LED that's underneath and if you have an LED that pops out the top of the uh, face of the enclosure um, you can you can if you step on it hard enough you can push it down and it'll fall inside the enclosure so the idea of this is hopefully um, <clears throat> the thickness of the enclosure <clears throat> will be greater than this little height bit here so that there's no, there's no LED that's going to be above the face of the pedal, if that makes sense. You'll also need a drill template. This is a drill template from my, fifth, from my sorry, uh, dirt and boost pedal. You'll notice that it does actually include the um, battery here, but I'm just going to move everything down. Um, you know, roughly uh, uh, down so that um, uh, it, I'll have more room up the top here for the P, for the for the um, for the PCB. Uh, this is obviously print to size because it's come from PDF, so you can sort of roughly guess whether it's going to fit or not um, in the top there. And it could actually fit. Uh, looks like it with a battery. Bit of a squeeze, but it probably could fit with a battery. Um, it's going. There's going to be tons of room without a battery, so. Um, yeah, I'll just move everything down um, so that fits in uh, nice and easily. And then with the DBE range, we don't actually have a direct drill template. Um, but like I said, you can use any 1590, 1590B drill, uh, drill template that you like. Um, just make the adjustments like I'm doing. Um, and then this will be the drill, uh, the drill holes for the actual... PCB and it also shows you this square around it is also the PCB size so when you're actually going to stick it on the front of your enclosure um, you can just make sure that you've got enough room for the PCB as well also just account for um, where the screw holes go these sort of um, these sort of uh, supports for the where the where the, where the, where the screws screw into um, when you put your PCB in obviously you have to lower it you can't put it right up the top because um, it's going to cover, it won't fit obviously because those um, drill holes are there so just move it down a little bit like that um, so you have enough room. So there's a few things involved with this. Um, I'm thinking of doing something that's going to be smashing pumpkins related as far as the graphics go. It's going to be very simple as well. Um, probably just the, a white love heart but I like to drill the holes first so I can actually see um, 
where they're going to be before I start doing artwork. If you do it the other way around, um, you put your lovely artwork on, then you start drilling holes in it, and they're not in the spot that you actually wish that they were. Um, so, <clears throat> first thing to do is drill, drill the um, uh, drill the enclosure. Then I'll do some artwork, um, which will just be my my labelling and drawing, probably with Posca pens and an epoxy um, epoxy coat over the top to to protect the artwork. And then uh, we will wire it up inside. So in order to drill the holes, obviously, we need to cut out the, um, the drill template. So just cut around this sort of shape. Um, and then I'm just gonna tape it down. I actually usually use electrician's tape because it's not messy and um, it, it has a good hold, but I'm actually out at the moment. Um, I've been out for about a year now. Uh, I really need to get some more. Uh, so I'm just gonna use tape. Um, and you just tape it down. Spend a bit of time actually lining this up properly because this is going to be where your holes are. So next we're going to drill it and that's going to involve going out to the garage. So I found my garage bench under all, all the junk that was piling up and now we're just going to punch the holes into the enclosure. Um, I'm just going to use this automatic hole puncher. So this is where it gets kind of approximate for me because um, I usually do this by eye which is probably why my uh, my enclosures always end up a little a little out of whack, but we should be right. There's plenty of room in this one, so it shouldn't have to be too accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and punch all the holes um, for the stump box switch will go there. LED will go here, and then you've got the two in and out jacks and the um, DC jack, and then the three uh, potentiometers across the top. Not all components are standard, so depending on what actual parts you're using will also depend on uh, what drill hole you'll need. Usually the foot switches usually are 12, uh, are 12 mil, but they often vary and it depends on the LED size you're using. For instance, this one I'm using today is uh, different to any other one that I've ever used. Um, same with the potentiometers, depends on the size and the brand. So just use some calipers to check or just drill up slowly. You can have instances where you're actually looking for six and a half mil instead of seven mil. Um, so if you're using one of these step bits in one mil increments, you might go over, but then it doesn't really matter if you go half a mil over as such, because um, you, you, it'll just give you a bit of wiggle room to get the, uh, to get the part into the, into the actual enclosure anyway. So this is the one I normally use, the one that goes up in one millimeter um, increments, but I do use um, this one for the 12 mil, uh, the 12 mil uh, drill hole because um, this one's a bit too long. So if I'm going through the top, um, it'll it won't make it through um, to get to 12 mil. So I have to use something that's a bit uh, a bit different to get through there. And I do recommend using step bits as they are very safe. I've had no incidences with step bits um, since I started using them many years ago. So that's all the drilling done. So usually at this point I just give the whole thing a test fit to make sure that everything's going to fit now while I'm out in the garage in front of the uh, drill press and that no other modifications need to be made. So the test fit worked out very well. No need for any modifications. Everything, everything is fitting uh, very well. Um, and the LED, as I mentioned, uh, will go through the back um, and you'll be able to see it on the front of the pedal there, which is pretty cool, I think. I think I'm going to do this more often. It's discreet. I'm kind of sick of LEDs that are really bright. Um, it's very discreet. It's enough to see the pedals turned on um, and you can't pop it out with your foot as well because it is pretty much perfectly flush with the, with the face of the pedal. Of course, at this point, it's too early to have the hardware in anyway because we've got to epoxy the front um, and put the graphics on the front as well. So I'll pull the hardware out. So I'm going to do something pretty rough and ready on the front here. As I said, the Smashing Pumpkin's heart and I'm going to do the best attempt I can at actually um, drawing it, even though it's simple. Trying to get something to look exactly the same can be quite tricky. Um, so this could take a few uh, a few attempts. I don't think I'm going to record it because I'll probably end up wiping it off 
uh, 10 times before I'm happy, happy with it. Um, these poskas can wipe off with just use a just use a, a wet rag and it'll come straight off if you're not happy with how it looks as well, which is another good uh, another good thing about poskas. So wish me luck. So that's the graphics done. I'm going to keep it nice and simple. Um, I was going to put labels for the um, for the knobs across the top, but it's just going to get too crowded, and I, I just like the way it looks at the moment. Um, sometimes less is more. So the next thing to do is actually the epoxy, and um, you may have seen me do this before. Um, if you haven't, I'll give you a quick rundown. Tape the holes because you don't want the epoxy falling through. Make sure when you tape the holes down from the back that it's pressed down firmly. If the epoxy finds a way to leak, it'll all leak through the, um, through the tape. So use a lot of tape and tape it down nice and firmly. Put, uh, press it down nice and firmly so it can't find a way uh, to leak through. Um, so now that you've got that on the front, you can actually put the epoxy on the top. So this is the stuff I'm using at the moment. You can get it from ArtRite it, uh, if you're in Australia. It's expensive um, from ArtRite. It's relatively expensive from ArtRite. Um, you can get them in larger quantities, much cheaper. Uh, I think automotive places sell it. Uh, I think they can use it for uh, car dashboards and things like that. So it's two parts of part A with one part of part B. And you don't need much for a little pedal like a um, 1590B. Um, you can just use probably, I'm probably gonna do about four or five tablespoons uh, actually, I'll probably use maybe six and three table, uh, teaspoons, sorry, um, and that should be plenty. This stuff's really messy too, so make sure you have some um, some baby wipes or some wet wipes and maybe even a, um, a tea towel just to clean up any spills. So this stuff is self-leveling, so you don't really need to push it around on the top. Um, you can if you want, like down the corner here, I'm not convinced it's going to make it that distance. So you can in encourage it to sort of move in that direction if you want. Um, if you have enough on there though, it should just cover uh, the whole surface on its own. So of course you don't have to use epoxy. You can use a clear coat or anything else just to protect the artwork on the top. I use epoxy obviously because it looks awesome. It's a real pain. It, um, it it is very, as I said before, messy, um, but it uh, it just looks great when it's done. So when you've finished epoxying the top, just put something over the top of it, like a box, um, to cover it so that dust and things don't get stuck on the uh, uh, inside the um, inside the epoxy before it's finished drying. So it's a couple of days later, and the epoxy is um, looking pretty firm. It's slightly soft, like a soft plastic, um, which usually means it hasn't fully cured yet, but it's hard enough for us to continue working on and it turned out pretty good. Uh, I'm quite happy with the um, with the final result. There's a few tension lines on the front that you might be able to see there. Some tension marks. I may have, uh, the ratio may not have been perfect um, or there may have been some sort of contaminants in the actual um, container that I was using. Something to look out for uh, in the future. Um, so now I'm just back out in the garage because we have to drill out these um, holes again. So if you're impatient like me and um, you're fitting the hardware in when the epoxy is still slightly soft, just be careful with the nuts because um, if you tighten them up too hard, <clears throat> you'll indent into the um, actual epoxy. So just just fit it in so that you can uh, you can wire it up on the inside, and then in a couple of days' time, um, or even just give it if you give it a, a full week, it'll be it'll be it'll, it'll be as hard as rocks, and then you can tighten it up as hard as you want. So the hardware's in, and now we're going to wire it up. There's a number of wiring diagrams that you can follow. Um, you, the one I'll be following is my own. Uh, so go to diyguitarpedals.com.au, click on um, uh, uh, PCBs and kits, click on the seven minute fuzz, go down to the build dock, um, which is sort of towards the bottom of the, of the seven minute fuzz um, product page. Bring that up. And in the document, I think it's towards the end as well, maybe page six approximately, there'll be a wiring diagram to wire up for mono with no battery, um, which is what I'm doing. If you want to, if you are installing a battery, there's other um, wiring diagrams. There's the Mad Bean um, standard wiring diagram. Uh, Google that one. And there's one on Toad, TonePad as well called, um, uh, if you look up the off-board wiring uh, 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 project, you'll see there's a number of different um, wiring 
um, schematics that he has uh, as well. So this isn't the most interesting part of the video, a little bit repetitive, you know, solder this here, solder that there. Um, so I'm just going to time lapse this part. So it's actually a new day and um, the effect is obviously finished. I put some white knobs on it the other night um, and um, <clears throat> I've tightened everything up now because the epoxy's rock hard. Um, so now we can actually hear what it sounds like. So I used to love Siamese Dream as a uh, depressed adolescent, I suppose you could say. Um, listened to that album a million times when I was when I was a, when I was um, when I was an adolescent and um, uh, I, I, I worked out some of the songs from that album, but. Um, I'm not sure if I actually remember much of it now, but um, I'll give one song a go. You have to excuse the uh, errors because it's been about 20 plus years. Um, so first thing to do is check that the clean channel is working. Which it is. Actually sounds pretty good and I've only got everything set to 12 o'clock. really surprised how good that sounds just on 12 o'clock I haven't even started EQing anything or setting anything up I am actually using the um, the bridge pickup um, which I think helps with um, to get the uh, Siamese dream sort of um, you know I suppose you could say modern uh, modern modern fuzz sound so let's just stuff around with these dials for a little bit and see what else um, we can get uh, this effect to do
may have noticed that um, knob was spinning around a bit. Um, I'll just have to tighten it up, uh, but hopefully you get the general idea. So Cheer Up Rock's probably the only song that I've played, um, a Smashing Pumpkins song I've played for um, quite some time. Um, and if I'm going to be playing any Smashing Pumpkins, obviously I'll be using um, using the op amp, the pum the pumpkin pie uh, op amp, um, big muff. It sounds closer to uh, the Siamese Dream um, guitar from what I remember. And it's actually funny when I, I remember when I first heard that when I first heard that um, guitar. I tried all sorts of things on my on my amp and my uh, and my guitar. I used to put it to the neck pickup. Um, uh, sorry, the um, bridge pickup. To make it more bassy and all that sort of stuff, but I just couldn't work out how the hell they had that, uh, you know, wall of fuzz sound. I didn't even know what fuzz was back then. I'm talking when I was like sort of 15. Um, so it's interesting how you learn these things as you go along. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's that's it for the um, pumpkin punk, pumpkin pie. I hope you like the um, the video and the detail that I've gone through um, assembling it and the finished product. Of course, I'm really happy with it. Um, there's no mistaking what that pedal, what what's inside this pedal, and what this pedal, what what the purpose of this pedal for me personally is um, is for. Um, so yeah, thanks for thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe for more. Um, and um, if, of course, if you need the PCB, um, you can get it from the website diyguitarpedals.com.au. DBE PCBs is um, where you'll find it. The pun, the punk and pie is what you're after if you want to build one of those. Uh, so yeah, thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.